Hello, this is David Wamsley back with a second Beaver Builder website strip down. In this one, I'm talking to Paul Lacey, who you'll probably know from the Beaver Builder Facebook group, a really nice guy. Now, he's talking about a site that he made called genuineconfidence.com. He actually shared this with the Beaver Builder Facebook group some time ago and also shared a great deal of detail on making it. So in some ways, he's as much responsible for this concept of the Beaver build a website stripped down as I am one day I'll have my own ideas anyway the sound is good on this one but I did have to insert a bit of my own screen casting which is just part of the joys of doing live skyping anyway I hope you won't see the joint too badly and I'll see you on the other side bye bye Paul hello how are you today uh, fantastic thank you David brilliant well Welcome to what we're now calling the Beaver Builder website strip down, episode <laughs> two. Now, Paul, you were supposed to be on first because you mm -hmm. in the Beaver Builder Facebook group shared this site with everyone and everyone absolutely loved it. And mm. I've really, from that moment on, I've wanted to talk to you about this particular site that we're going to look at. But before that, for people who don't know you, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yep, absolutely. So I, I definitely got lucky on that site. So um, I really appreciated all the, the nice comments I got uh, when I when I shared that one. But to to introduce myself, yep, um, I run a, I guess I'm, I'm competing with you, you, you guys on the WP Builds podcast as well to try yeah. and declare myself the smallest, teeniest little web design company. Um, that exists. So I'm a, you know, a freelance web designer developer working in WordPress. I've been doing it for a long, long time, uh, freelance for maybe 10, 10 plus years and kind of 20 years of working as a website designer developer. So I really should be amazing by now, but you know, I'm, I'm learning so much from recently joining the community. So I've recently rebranded as well, which is I think the site that you can see at the moment. Yeah. Which actually at this point isn't live, but by the time this this goes out will be. I hope I'm not kind of ruining the, um, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> this is live type uh, situation there. But so this is my new uh, brand WP Blueprint Design, and the the new web address will be WP Blueprint dot Design. And um, so that was that was kind of a my new brand is kind of niching down to just WordPress because I used to do all sorts of web including Flash in the old days, but um, now just WordPress. I'm based in Worcestershire and um, share an office space with a couple of uh, a couple of other kind of web type people. And lovely. Over here. Yeah, lovely mm. office space as well. I was just taking a look. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a tour digitally sometime. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, so that's the intro over. Let's take a look at the site that we're looking at, which is called Genuine Confidence. Have you got it on your tab there? Yeah. Yep, there you go. Well, I don't know how we're going to do this. Now, a lot of what we're going to look at, I think, on this is going to be more to do with the sort of design aspect more than the functionality. And mm. I'm going to let you just talk us through whatever you like. Oh, yeah. But maybe first, yeah. <laughs> just to lead you in, um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about how this project came about, how you found the client and what they were looking for. Yep, sure. So it's this is a kind of funny story how this one came about because um, this website came about through me deciding to go to the WordPress Birmingham meetup group. Um, I think it was the second time I went and I go to this the meetup group purely just for social reasons. I don't want to talk about work when I'm at the group and stuff like that. I like I love talking about WordPress, but if, if literally if somebody turns up there and says I'm looking for a WordPress designer, I will hide in the corner because I just don't want to talk about it at this point. Um, but anyway, I got talking to you just talk to various different people and they kind of get a feel for who is a kind of WordPress person and who is a kind of person who's struggling with WordPress and, and so you're just kind of all helping each other out in these groups and I got talking to this guy Simon and he was asking me a bunch of questions and um, and we kind of exchanged business cards and stuff and um, and then he contacted me uh, a couple of days later and said you know I'd, I'd love to talk to you about a website and at first I was kind of like oh no that's not what I wanted I didn't I didn't want clients from the WordPress group but um, which is just my ridiculous take on marketing and self-promotion. I was really terrible at it. But um, yeah, so we got talking and 
he's a really nice guy, like a super nice guy and really, I don't know what the word is, an impressive person, you know, they really, really driven and great ideas and stuff like that. So he was setting up this company, Genuine Confidence, on the, as a kind of um, what people are calling these days a side hustle um, to his to his day job where he kind of works as a counsellor, as far as I know. A counsellor uh-huh. as in a, um, you know, someone helping with uh, psychology you know, psychological challenges and stuff like that. Sure. So, yeah, so he set me up on the side and, you know, asked for a quote for the website and I gave him a quote and he said it was too much and and so I kind of <laughs> lowered it to a ridiculous price yeah. and which was, which I'll happily share was kind of £1,000 and yeah. it was, you know, it was a case of, I was really kind of intrigued at that point to, to try to deliver a website through meeting someone in person at a networking event, which was just completely not the normal way that I get work. It's all through referrals. Um, And I I really liked Simon and I thought this could be a really good site. And so I kind of, I did kind of make sure he he was kind of, the expectations were managed on what I'd done with the budget and all that sort of stuff. But I said, you know, we could, we could do a really nice site and, you know, let me kind of do what I think we should do on it. And he was up for that, and um, he'd already drafted out the majority of, of his content, and I kind of really felt that on that basis it was going to be a good one. So I took a risk and, and went for it, and um, and so we, we started the project, and uh, yeah. that's that's how it goes. So it wouldn't have, you know, a typical project like this, I think, would be more than double what I charged him. Yes. But, um, I, you know, I, I really wanted to kind of have a, a project that I could put some love into in this this was an opportunity for that. Yeah. Well, if you mm. scroll down on your site, there, there's a picture of him, mm. isn't there, on the, the mm-hmm. bit there. Now, you see this guy with that hat there. You see, I would definitely <laughs> want to work with him because yeah. that exudes, yeah. it's, he exudes confidence there, doesn't he? I love that look. He's a cool guy. And, you know, and the point of Simon you know, his kind of journey really is that he wasn't a cool guy. And I'm not trying to say what is and isn't a cool guy, but he was somebody massively lacking in confidence uh, as far as, you know, he's told me and stuff. And, you know, his his dress sense was probably more like mine. And um, he went through some kind of journey of change um, and basically just kind of, you know, couldn't, couldn't meet girls basically in, I think was, you know, his problem yeah. or couldn't talk to girls, just couldn't, just couldn't talk to, you know, the fact that the idea of going on a date was just too much. And I'm not sure exactly how he acquired his confidence, but he went through some kind of process and maybe some coaching of some sort and changed his life, changed his entire approach to, you know, how he looks and how he talks. Yeah. And then he decided he wanted to share that and, um, and maybe turn it into a kind of side business and eventually a full-time business. And that's, that's where genuine confidence came from. Yeah. Um, it's kind of service. If you drop down the service menu there, you can see, you know, he's kind of focusing on dating and relationships, image style, body and language and career and development. So anything that though, are those real barriers for people, you know, in love and, um, self, uh, their, their own self image and also in their career mm-hmm. to help people overcome those barriers. And, um, so that's what he does now. Yeah. Is yeah. it, was he saying it's primarily a blog? Is it? Is it primarily a blog? No, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a website to sell the services that he right. offers. Um, there is a blog, but I think yeah. the blog is, you know, like a business blog is to help yeah. promote the the business itself. Um, at the moment, he does some some one to one type counselling stuff, and um, but. He's launching a digital course, you know, a series of online videos, uh-huh. um, which we're built, which we're building into this site with Restrict Content Pro, and um, and that's he's hoping that will be a, a nice success. To, which and that that course is uh, called Dating Confidence for Men, so it's uh-huh. it's all about kind of the first steps, and it's very very interesting. I've seen most of the videos, and you know, it starts with simple stuff like, you know, if you if you can't even speak to somebody. Go into a shop and ask the person who works in the shop the time. You know, just, just these basic things. Even though you know what the time is, just do, do these little challenges that you are totally uncomfortable with and build on that. And that, so there's some there's some great videos on there, some really funny ones of him uh, doing some really random stuff. But 
stuff that was absolutely shocking if you've got um, yes. low low confidence in this kind of area. You kind of, I can't do that. I can't go up to someone in the street and literally strike a conversation. But anyway, enough enough on that. Sorry, that's um, mm, no. It sounds that's, great. That's what Simon does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Very interesting project though. I was really kind of engaged by the idea of it just to to work on it. So. Uh, and what kind of content did you get? Did you get any kind of design brief? To, were there certain colours you had to use, or did you have the mm. logo? Did that come? Yep, he'd done. He'd he'd got the brand done some mm. somewhere. Um, I don't know exactly where he'd got it done, but he showed me the logo. I thought it was a great brand, mm. um, and he'd written uh, a lot of his content already, yes. and it was really good content as well. Um, I mean, I'm not an expert on these things, but I, I was reading through it and it was engaging content. And, you know, as a as a web designer, you kind of want to grab those opportunities when that kind of stuff comes along, you know that you can do stuff with it. Um, so there was definitely no designing with Laura Mipson. It was all the real <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Made a big difference. Yeah. And, and your design process on this, uh, how did you start it off? I mean, did you just show him some... Um, did you get Photoshop out and show him something before you started work on building the site or did you go straight into Beaver Builder and start building it out? So I haven't used Photoshop for a long time other than just resizing images and um, mm. you know I'm, I'm probably overusing Photoshop on that basis but uh, straight into Beaver Builder really I mean even just Beaver Builder is fantastic for just wireframing a site from the fir- from the get go um, yeah. without design at all. Just just having a feel of how you can click around. Yeah. Um, but it was a, it was a case of dropping in the content into where I felt it would need to go structurally with just grey boxes, and then you know that's the kind of basic plumbing of it, and then what you can basically call colouring it in to. Um, you know, for yeah, want of a yeah. better phrase, it is literally kind of okay. We've got a top, we've got a top banner area. Let's make that look nice. Okay, that's looking nice now. Let's move down to the next bit. It's you know, and and, and then by the time you got to the bottom of the page, you're probably already kind of thinking the top of the page doesn't look as good as you know how the process has developed by the time you've got to the bottom, or, or maybe you kind of get to page four, and the first page that you've done is is feeling lacking in quality compared to. The rest of the pages so uh-huh. it was a case of just you know playing with the content trying different ideas and seeing what worked and for sure one thing that we did um yeah. was on the you know once we'd done the first version the second version of it was simpler than the first version so at first it was adding a lot of stuff and then yeah. the second phase of the design was removing a lot of the stuff it was just uh-huh. simplifying huge hugely yeah uh, um, which is nice one one thing that struck me that the copy was really good. There was a good uh, value proposition on the home page there. And mm. did that come about? Did, was you given that in the first place? Did that lead the design? Yeah, I mean, um, it, it led to the imagery as well, uh-huh. the choice of imagery. So, I mean, all the imagery on this site, unless it's real, Im- you know, photos of Simon, for instance, mm. uh, it's all from Pexels.com. Uh-huh. Um, which is a fantastic. I think I think it's similar to Unsplash. Uh-huh. I think it's called Unsplash, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, it was some of the some of the copy did change, um, but a lot of the time it changed whereby I kind of chose an image, and the image was so good, like this one. We we're really blessed with this image that we found on uh, yes. Pexels. Um, tweaked the text a little bit to even to sit even better with it. Uh-huh. So um, yeah, I mean, there's some. The homepage has got. I mean, if you want to kind of have a look at what goes on, you know, down the page, mm-hmm. you know, we definitely wanted a picture of Simon on there. Yeah. And then the, the, this area was another fantastic one. Mm. You know, the, the adventure begins um, as a kind of background image as well there. And, and we also wanted to get across that while Simon focuses a lot on, you know, dating advice for men, it isn't purely a... Uh, a kind of service just for men. He, he, he's got quite a lot of um, women as clients with career things and stuff like that as well. It's, but it's just, um, yes. Yeah. It's just, we wanted to make sure that we kind of not totally masculinized it. I don't know if that's a word, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I do know what you mean. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting as well. You were saying about 
designing in the browser here. And, mm. and this is, I was having a look at this. I was uh, adjusting it for responsivity. Is that the, is that a right word as well? <laughs> but you know, we, we know we know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and it, uh, do you know what? I, I spend a lot of time doing this. I'm sure everybody does, but I've seen you've done it beautifully. If you go down to that bottom image with the, mm. the woman holding the cup there and <laughs> I just move that in, we'll see what you've done here. Because I like this. It needs to go yeah, further. The adventure I think. begins. Yeah. The adventure begins need to show and then suddenly. Yeah. Goes, oh, let's, let's go, go down. Yeah. So, you see, this is why it seems to make sense to me to do a lot of the designing in the browser because, you know, picking yep. those images and deciding where the text is going to work or whether it's going to work, you know, something you can't do in Photoshop. No, you can't. Well, no. you could, but it's it's kind of long winded, I guess, really, for it all the. Be, yeah. 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 So, I really like that. How did you do that? Was that with custom CSS? So if we just fire open Beaver Builder at the moment, we can yeah. just see that. That's um, it's not with custom CSS. It's purely using Beaver Builder's built-in. See, we've huh. got two rows. Ah, uh, we've got the yes. We've got one uh, one that's for tablet and um, desktop, which is this one. So we have yep. the text over on the left and an empty an empty yeah. column there, just so that the the feature image that we want to show to get uh -huh. that message across um, is there. And then on our banner that is purely for the mobile, it's the same photo, but it's a totally different crop of the photo. Uh -huh. And this is one of the kind of things that every time we come across something like this, I'll just keep highlighting it. That um, I, One of the things that I'm, I'm not into is the idea of, you know, I can make this website in minutes, not hours or days. <laughs> you know, I, I really kind of, I get that Beaver Builder does that for people and it is a huge time saver. But the thing about it is, is that we should, we can make much better sites if we, everything that we think should, you know, takes us a few minutes. We actually spend, you know, maybe an hour or two hours kind of looking at every single detail mm -hmm. so that, you know, and that, that's what I've tried to do on a lot of sites these days is to, you can see, you know, the, 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 where this particular text goes and then where it goes on a tablet is different. And then eventually I kind of run out of uh, opportunities on mobile for this one. But I'm not overlaying the text over a text image like I would be on the, the bottom. So yes, I'm absolutely fine to, um, to, to overlay it. But so, yeah, I mean, I just feel that anybody uh, can benefit and massively improve their design without needing extra skills by just saying, okay, I've done this banner, I'll do the next one, and then come back to the top and literally ask yourself the question, can I improve this? The answer is always yes. Sometimes it's adding something else or sometimes it's removing something, but, you know, or choosing a different image. But mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's what connected with a lot of people on this particular site when I posted it. it, it the, the small details that Yes. difficult to describe you've done do do come across in the overall in uh, impression that somebody gets from something and this is a, like you said a very very simple minimal site but every element has got a bit of detail that's gone into um why it is like it is yeah yeah uh, simple is so beautiful and when it's done well but it does take i i can see a lot of time i mean i <laughs> i've not made a site which is nice and simple like this so i'm kind of very envious of you for doing it there was a another thing which i wouldn't mind you just pointing out as mm. well i think i can't remember which page it was on and i'm not seeing the display very well it could have been under services maybe on a few pages where you've got uh, an image to the left and text to the right and then vice versa on the next row uh, let's yes, have a look. Yes, let's see if we can find um, that. Uh, it's not that one. Uh, let's see if it's. Let's take a look at this career development one. Yeah, I think. Haha. <laughs> Maybe it's this one, how it works. Let's see. It could even be about. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a pretty <laughs> simple one. Yeah, that, this is going well. <laughs> That's a very simple page that one. So maybe it is the services. It's the services one. I don't know why oh, I didn't scroll it's down. Amazing. It's obviously that one. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is again where I went to check as well um, mm -hmm. the, that word responsivity or whatever I'm calling it. There's got to be of a course. Problem. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the res I guess it's just the responsive view. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that'll be better. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, but what I notice on here is I'm guessing that you've used the Beaver Builder stacking order to swap those round because otherwise you would have two images exactly. together. Is that what yeah. you did? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and that's you know I think um, you know coming from some I never used to use a page builder not because I I didn't like them but they didn't exist when I was mm -hmm. making sites and so this kind of situation. Um, you know, we'd never kind of build a page that had them stacking the wrong way around because we, the tools we had didn't encourage that or didn't kind of yeah. make that a possible mistake. Um, yeah. Because, you know, if you're hand coding the stuff, that, that can't really happen. Um, so with Beaver Builder and other page builders, you do have that, that yeah. possibility of, you know, yeah. having an odd stacking order where one circle is there and then, and then it's right below it, the next one. And you kind of, to the user that, that's confusing. So yes. we want kind of consistency. And again, that's just taken a few more minutes just to, I mean, one of the, the big things I see a lot when you, you know, change the settings on a column like this is, is that when you get to something like this, this kind of width, like 650 pixels, yeah. Yeah. Um, and this text here is um, not stretching all the way to the edge. It's simply because in Beaver Builder, somebody hasn't defined that row on mobile to stretch 100%. It takes a yes. couple of seconds, but it makes a big difference to the user and the consistency. So, you know, looking at this now, maybe I should have also made that center aligned. You know, that's something I could probably do now. But, um, but yeah, you know, little tiny details like that. You don't want your kind of text on a, on a tablet in portrait mode to kind of be yeah. looking like a kind of series of hourglasses stacked on top of each other. Mm. Um, banners and then text going in and then suddenly it's not in and indented so yeah those little details again beaver builder allows you to do that stuff without custom css it's just yeah. um knowing that it's there and taking that time to to go and take a look yeah absolutely shall we just change it up a bit and take a look at the back end and your plugins because i mm. know everybody likes to look at what plugins are used yep um yeah. first of all there's a plugin that i that is really useful um, uh -huh. that I tend to use on the front end and the back end. And it's the Cobalt Apps Child Femur plugin. Uh -huh. um, and what it allows you to do is to create a child theme or, uh, very quickly from the parent theme. In this case, this is Generate Press. Yes. Uh, so I was able to create a very quick child theme from there. And if I jump into the back and show what that looks like. Um, because we're recording it's going to be yeah, slower yeah let's just uh press that again there we go we're in child femur here it is uh child editor uh-huh it's a good idea to turn it off once you um once your site is live i've turned it on for today uh -huh. um you don't really want the kind of back-end editing and stuff but so you've got kind of the ability to create this child theme here and yeah. have all your files like the style style sheet and stuff like that and your functions file in there but it's so quick to edit and you get this wonderful uh yes. a, it's got the ace editor that it's in, it's integrated with um which is it's got all sorts of things like autocomplete functions for php autocomplete for css so you can see you know that needs indenting so um you know Carl, just it's so good at just quickly changing so, oh, look at that important. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so, but it's also on the front end, um, you've got a little front end editor. So if you're kind of working, I know not everybody does this, but if they're working, you know, in their, um, their uh, kind of browser kind of tool of choice, in my case, it's Firefox Developer Edition, and you're kind of tweaking some stuff in here and writing some CSS and whatnot, you can just pop open this, this here and your child theme style sheet file is right there the exact one we were looking at a minute ago yes and if you were to make some changes in here like the logo size you see them replicated so you can uh -huh. really kind of tweak some of the things in here uh -huh. uh, very 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 quickly and it's useful because you know just before we jump into those plugins yes the Mobile and tablet header is something that people struggle with quite a lot. Yes. And you can see that on tablet, you offer, you'll see a lot of sites whereby at this point, this all starts stacking up. Yes. 
uh, because they ran out of space. And I think, you know, if you convince yourself that that's okay, you're probably kind of missing out, you know, yeah. and maybe, you know, go and ask for some help on the Beaver Builder Forum and I'll, I'll help. <laughs> because, you know, it's much better to kind of say, okay, when we get to this point where we're going to run out of space, let's stack it mm-hmm. somewhere in between the mobile menu and, um, and the main one. So I just wanted to point that out, that child femur is just really, really a cool plugin for for this kind of thing. But yeah, jumping into the plugin list. Well, actually, I wouldn't mind asking you just on your process. Mm-hmm. So, are you you're hand coding your CSS using this? Are you? Um, yeah. So yeah. most of the time. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm kind of well kind of versed in CSS and yeah. and stuff like that. So, and I I really do encourage anybody to to try and level up on their CSS if they're if, at whatever level they're at, you know, there's always something new to, to learn. Um, you know, I'm learning CSS grids at the moment, which is a new thing. And I've only, literally, I've only just started messing with Flexbox, which is ridiculous for the amount of years <laughs> I've been doing this. But, um, so you can, you can do more of those tweaks that you see other people's sites. Like, How did they do that? I can't do that with Beaver Builder. Yeah. Well, you can get 95% of, of the way there with Beaver Builder and then CSS, mm-hmm just puts those finishing touches on that makes you really kind of, you know, you, you can do a kind of course for a couple of days on CSS and uh, I'm generally not trying to sound, um, you know, trying to sound super clever by saying this because CSS is not as hard as people think. And that's what people who do JavaScript tell me because uh, I'm awful at JavaScript <laughs> and, and, and I think they must be just, you know, trying to sort of sound clever. But CSS is... There's no logic in CSS. You're just coloring stuff in. So yes. it is something that can be learned. And um, even if you're just tweaking some aspects on it, one step at a time, every site that you do, try and learn some CSS that improves on the last site that you did. So yeah, there's, there's, the CSS is all in here. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I tidied this up before our, our talk. <laughs> I, t- I said to David, I said, can you um, just don't end? edit anything don't, don't go into the back end of here i'm just <laughs> tidying up so i just added some comments because it was a little bit messy when i was kind of running down to <laughs> my deadline and stuff but um so yeah there's it's not even look there's not even that much css in here um, yeah. to achieve the, the little things that i've done there um there's a there's there's hardly any php going on on this particular site this is a this is very much a brochure site and yes. this php does not do anything it, um that actually doesn't helps the front end this is purely a function that i kind of put together using some of the generate press filters and uh-huh. and uh, actions available it's got yeah. some fantastic filters and actions and all this does is every time you create a new page and you hit um i mean this is i'll share this script so this is this script is going to yes, go please. on my blog um when i finally launch it if i just remove that and we pop open a new page You'll see what happens when you. Um, so let's just put something in here, just for a minute. Uh, hit Page Builder. You get the, whatever the default layout is. Sidebar, title, there, etc. Uh-huh. All that stuff's there. Um, if you are okay about that, you can go and tick all the boxes in Generate Press, and you can uh, make it. I've just published that page. Sorry. You can, you know, make that sidebar go away, make the title go away, and you can tick a bunch of boxes and it'll take you another couple of minutes to do mm-hmm. that. Um, whereas if I have my function in here, hopefully I did cut and paste that properly. Uh-huh. So it's a couple of functions. One's yep. removing the sidebar, one's removing the title, and one of them is uh, adding a custom body class to make it go full width. Sure. It's all stuff from Generate Press. Um, and then I was to, so that's back there now, and in theory if I hit Page Builder now, it's saving me a few seconds of ticking those boxes. You can see the um, the title's gone. We've gone full width and we've lost the sidebar. Yes. Um, so just you know, I'll, I'll happily share that um, uh, that function out there. Um, shout out to Tom Usborne as well from Generate Press because he looked at my script. I showed him and I said, you know, what do you think of this? And he said it's great, but if you uninstall Beaver Builder, that's going to break your site. 
Ah. So he, he helped me and just added a, uh, a line which just did a check first to check if Beaver Builder was indeed installed before it tried to do anything. So that was cool. And also a shout out to Ronnie Blom, who um, I hope that I've, I've pronounced that right. He's well known in the Beaver Builder group. Yes. And he, he tested it on a couple of sites as well just to test it worked. And uh, he seemed to have no problems with it. So that was good. So, yeah, little little tweaks like that save you valuable seconds and ticking boxes and stuff so yeah so there's nothing in here doing anything to the front end it's purely saving me a few seconds and so every site that i'm using now with beaver builder yes that is using full with views as i just paste this into my functions and you know saves, well. saves a couple of seconds stop stops you having to pause every couple of seconds to you know, mm-hmm. um, break the momentum and everything so yep would you would you like to have a look in the plugin list of course yeah mm-hmm. okay do you, right. uh, just while you were talking about that, you say you paste it in each time. So you don't work from a blueprint. Do you start from scratch? Uh, you know project? what? Um, I've just done a project where I'm going to reverse engineer a couple of bits and bobs on it to um, to make it my starter, uh, uh-huh. my starter generate press setup with the various plugins. Uh-huh. Um, the community, the, the Beaver Builder community has been massively helpful in helping me kind of sound out this plugin versus that plugin, this versus mm-hmm. that, all the stuff that working on my own, you know, in, you know, you don't really get to talk about with people. So I've got to the point where I know what my list of plugins is now that I use all the time. And so I've got that set up on my site ground, not quite, but it's going to be set up on my site ground on my WP Engine accounts to mm-hmm. be able to just duplicate those sites every time I, I start one now great and um, i got the idea from that from dave foy who is not so much known in the beaver builder community he's more known in the elementor and the generate press community and and the wp innovator group as well he's he's kind of in there and um he kind of released a starter theme which was generate press child theme with all these various plugins and he put it out there for free i saw that i was like i can't believe i'm not doing that you know and it's just (laughs) again it just saves Saves an hour at the beginning of every project, just installing all those plugins again. So, yeah, little tweaks like that is, is all good. Yeah, great. Well, I yeah. don't know. Which ones do we want to point out on this? Let's have a look. Uh, I, I don't actually recognize the first one. Yep. So I don't – I have kind of – I keep getting reports from clients recently that they put a, a video in from YouTube, and when they view it on a, um, a mobile device – the height stays the same, but the width changes. So they end up with like a portrait video chopping uh-huh. off the sides of the preview image and stuff. Um, I've got a feeling that's going to get solved by WordPress at some point right. because it seems to be a problem on so many sites. So this plugin, all it does is it just stops the videos from going wrong on mobile. So I've just been dropping that in. Ah. On, on every project now so whenever someone so it's, a, it's the r of advanced responsive video embedder so it seems to solve the problem on vimeo and youtube great so uh, yeah is it free yeah. on the repository yeah that's a free one from the, the wordpress repository yeah wow wonderful yep We've got beaver butter pro child femur i mentioned already content mm-hmm. aware sidebars again mm-hmm. we're using that to put different sidebars on different sections um for when we're not using beaver builder type layouts and on this particular site we've got a sidebar for the blog and we've got a sidebar for the online course um the uh-huh. dating course whereby and that allows us in, you know in the appearance uh, widget section to uh-huh. to define a dating confidence course and then the standard sidebar over there so there's a different sidebar with a with a custom menu in there very very simple I was using the WPMU um, sidebar, advanced sidebar plugin or something like that before, and I felt that it was slowing things down quite considerably. Yes. I saw Dave Foy was using this plugin in his starter theme. I asked him a couple of questions about it, tried it out, and it feels like a better solution to me. It feels a bit more lightweight. Yes. So, yeah. There's one, there's one by Woo themes. Are they still called Woo themes now that yeah, Automatic yeah. have taken over? Yeah, they, they have a, a Woo sidebars, which is very simple. does the same thing, I think. I haven't used it for a long time, though. No, I haven't tried it either. But, um, mm. Yeah, I'm happy with this one for now. Mm. And uh, So, yeah. 
Uh, I definitely was finding the WMU one was slowing down the back end of WordPress, not the front end, but it felt like it felt like it was the culprit on a couple of projects anyway. So yeah, we've got Google Analytics plugin. I think Simon installed that. Um, uh, GP Premium is the the add-on, the premium upgrade for Generate Press, which is yeah. an absolute fantastic deal uh, for WordPress. I, I got it for thirty dollars for life. Uh, as an early adopter mm-hmm. and uh, I, it was about two weeks ago I contacted Tom and he mentioned you know you know Paul you're doing you've got loads of sites you've got 30 installs now with <laughs> generate press and, uh, and um, he actually told me this after I'd mentioned to him Tom I, I feel guilty about this I've, I've paid you $30 and I'm, I've, <laughs> you know your website your, your product is doing amazing things for me so I I voluntarily upgraded to the um, the yearly license, which I think anyone who, if you if you're doing this for profession and you can afford to do it, do it. Yeah, you know. oh, that's a nice thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gravity Forms is my choice. Uh, I've never tried the others, you know, Formidable mm-hmm. and all the others. So I've just stuck with that. I've got a license, and um, it it does does what I need it to do. Mailgun solves all my problems whereby emails don't get through to clients, especially on contact forms and um, yes. orders and stuff like that. So Mailgun is basically, for anyone who doesn't know, um, a service that allows you to, your website sends an email, it goes via Mailgun and then gets to the right place uh, first time. Mm-hmm. And it does a handshake with your actual mail DNS settings so that um, it legitimizes the sending of email from your site. And I know there's other plugins that do that as well. Um, it's similar to the Mandrill service, but Mandrill started charging, so we jumped we jumped to Mailgun uh-huh. instead. <laughs> uh-huh. We've got the Managed WP Worker. Yes. So I'm using, yeah. Well, I wanted big, to ask about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. are you, you doing a care plan with this site? Not yet. Um, so I'm, I'm very behind on things like care plans. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, I've been learning from, you know, people like yourself who do that kind of thing. And um, kicking myself that I've been, done this stuff for years. And Although you did reassure me earlier, David, that these care plans are quite new. I new so. Yeah. Yes. But actually, the point of it is where I've struggled, and I, and I think other people might struggle with this it's just a kind of mental attitude that surely a client won't want to pay me for this <laughs> and it's getting your head around that this is a hugely valuable service to your client it's also hugely value valuable to your own well-being to go to sleep at night knowing that this stuff's all taken care of <laughs> so you know daily backups for 90 days and a better hosting provider than your client might choose themselves you know all this stuff's good yeah. So yeah, Managed WP. I met them at WordCamp London. Um, they obviously got took over by GoDaddy. I had a kind of personal beef with GoDaddy from years and years ago. Just terrible support. But they did reassure me, and you know, I've heard other people, John Perez, say you know that they've upped their game and stuff like that. Managed WP have been bought out from them. I met the people. They were yeah. really smart people, and you know they. I thought I've got to give this a go. I'll give it a go, and it was fantastic. Really yeah. impressed. So, what's yep. it doing here? Is it? Are you looking after the site at the moment? Are you updating things you know through what? this? Even anyone who doesn't sign up to a care plan, I'm connecting mm-hmm. it up to Manage WP and just sticking it on the 30-day free backup that they do. Okay. Um, in a way, anyone who is, I've also got a list in my freed camp of people who I need to tap up for care plans, and Simon is one of them, but. I'm waiting for him to kind of fully launch his new product so that sure. it kind of becomes part of, you know, a kind of better need for him to kind of recognize the, that. And then, then we'd hopefully, you know, upgrade his hosting to, he's already got a good host, he's already on site ground, but maybe kind of move to WP Engine and get kind of daily backups going as on managed WP as well as the ones he's got on site ground and going into his Dropbox and stuff like that. Yeah. No, I was asking about it just because, you know, I, Care plans is still new to me. I haven't organized it. So most of the people sites I've done, they've been let out there and I've not looked after them. So I've, I've always wondered about those who don't have an official care plan, whether they still do kind of unofficially look after them and update their sites. 
and it looks like I you do. Do a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do, and and people aren't paying me for it, you know, and they they don't know I'm doing it a lot of the time, but. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of a um, you get so bogged down in the the work, the live work. You have these kind of ideas of I must get back to this person, and you know, I've I've got a hosting accounts with people who've been there for free for eight years, and <laughs> yeah. it's just you know, people will be shouting at their screen at this point. You know, how have you let that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just bankrolling their websites after you know that the money I made from their kind of initial build eight years ago is probably gone in hosting costs. But yes. so uh, you know the the community is fantastic at helping to point out these are the things you should be doing and whatnot. Mm. So yeah. I know that so well. Actually, it's exactly the same. I've gone and updated people's sites, and they don't know I've done it. I've just done it because I know they wouldn't have done it, you know, because I didn't organize anything in the first place. So completely right. understand it. Yep. Mm. yep. We've got Restrict Content Pro here. Uh, that's that's powering a, um, a new section of the website, which is Simon's course uh, for dating. And it's around ah, here somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, the course. Really simple pages. Just simple traditional sidebar content. There's no landing page here. We're building a landing page for the actual course itself, but you can see he's kind of currently producing these secret pages, and you can kind of see you click on the different uh, pages there, and you can see it's just an introduction, friendly introduction, and then the various different videos that he's been producing behind the scenes uh -huh. that take you through the kind of process of challenges to do this and do that, and, and eventually. You end up, you know, with some personal support from him at the end and stuff. So, we're using Restrict Content Pro for that, and that was on recommend on recommendation of Jay Oki and uh, Adam Price Pricer. Yes. He's Pricer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. WP Crafter. Uh, exactly. WP Crafter. Uh, really good guys. Uh, Jay Oki's a friend of mine on the group, and um, he's always got good advice. If if you if you're kind of new to the the Beaver Builder group, and and Jay Oki gives you some advice. <laughs> listen <laughs> he knows what he's talking about so um so yeah uh, restrict content pro the sg optimizer is the site ground um, mm -hmm. plugin that helps you kind of get the most out of their caching system and then we've got the uabb yep uh which i really do love that i've got i've, I've got pro power pack as well and yes. i personally at the moment prefer the old the uabb um, I don't know if I prefer it. I've just used it and it's done jobs for me and I probably just haven't explored PowerPack as much as yet. Actually, um, can I, that's all. Can I yeah. take you on a slight detour? Because there, there are some modules I see that are being used as buttons, those dual buttons on your site. Is it possible to take a look at what modules you do use on the front? I know on the home page it's there, isn't it? A yep. UABB module. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which a yeah. lot of people asked about that, didn't they? They did, yeah. I think um, the dual button is, I mean, I, I probably only use 10% of their modules, but mm -hmm. a few of them are just fantastic. This dual button one, it's got so many, and I've, PowerPack's got the same thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, having the kind of the big call to action and the, the lesser call to action if you're not quite ready. And the, the whole idea of, you know, have we convinced you yet? Have we convinced you yet? No. <laughs> No, okay. We'll find out some more about confidence and how it works and stuff. And so it's kind of, and you know, even the little simple things. That one of the modules I've got is really good, and all it does is it just auto crops an image to landscape or square for you, and it just lines uh, things up perfectly. So. Um, can I just yeah. ask you as well? While you were up there, there was um, the, yes, these icons that you've got here in the um, mm. orange boxes here. Are they? Uh, from UABB or are they icons from somewhere I'm else? I'm not sure where they're from actually, so we can just have a quick they, look. They kind of look they, like they're set, nice and thin ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this this is a UABB module here, so uh -huh. I guess um, Could be looking at the icon set there, there, it's coming from... Old yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah you yeah. are near the top, I think. Oh yeah, just, just out of interest, I thought it was. I quite like their icons. Yeah, and they've got some nice style options with the. I'm not sure where they've gone, but um, yeah, you know, we've kind of just made the the background orange and the the icon itself a lighter 
Mm-hmm. Just so it stands out. So we've got the white, the orange, and the lighter orange there as well. You probably might not see that on the screencast, but um, a few little details there. But again, you know, the, the whole responsiveness of this row is, is really nice that um, you kind of get to the point where they don't fit anymore and we, we drop it down to full width um, columns, mm. uh, stretching the text out as wide as it can go but not stretching the icon, so it's absolutely humongous icon. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, one so. one other thing I spotted, actually, as well, you had a pricing table. Was that the UABB pricing yes. table? Yes, oh. it is the UABB pricing table, yeah. I think that's on all of these um, these ones here. There was, I know that I did a little bit of CSS. Yes. It was only a line or two. Um, we can see it. See what happens if I remove it, to be honest. So I can't remember why I did it. You can see there's not much going on there. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I didn't. I couldn't control the padding within the module uh-huh. around this Skype coaching one-to-one and dating. And <laughs> you can see I've obviously got an OCD about these things <laughs> because it really doesn't, doesn't matter that much. But it might actually... If yeah here it was this line yes. here is yes. two lines these are one so there was a reason that wasn't yes. OCD I wanted yeah. those to all line up perfectly and um, without having to uh-huh. that, that's how I solved that basically um, great so yeah I couldn't remember why but that's why yeah sorry I took you off then didn't I are we finished actually with the UAB modules that you've used because I was uh, yeah, you know I don't use a lot of them the one I use a lot isn't on this site is the the advanced post module um ah, yes i really like that module and it's got some it's got a couple of php filters which again i'm going to do a blog post about that when i eventually get around to that kind of thing because i've got a, using their kind of php filter you can if i just jump is that okay if i just jump to another site to demonstrate this yeah please because this is this is where are we uh, here we go. This is a really cool feature that I was when I found this feature with UABB, it stopped me looking for another plugin slider to put into the site. Mm-hmm. Uh, this site isn't live yet, by the way. So um, mm-hmm. let's see. Yeah, so I need some feature images in here. But um, yeah, so if I can keep this still, here's a the carousel mode with the advanced post thing. There would normally be an image there, but like I say, I haven't finished Mm -hmm. it. And what you normally get with all the sliders is the title and then the excerpt. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of it. And I needed more than that. Um, I I was using the excerpt for something else completely, uh, an excerpt. And I needed on this slider, which is a kind of an events-based thing, to display this subtitle bit here. And... Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, a advanced custom field for when the first date of that show is, and then the last date of that show is, uh-huh. and with the PHP filter, which you can just cut and paste and just tweak, you can yeah. achieve um, you can achieve that. So you can replace the excerpt with something with a hundred custom fields if you wanted, and still uh-huh. have them within the uh, the advanced the advanced wow. uh, post module. So that's a Again, I've not really used that many modules on this. This is a really minimal site, so mm-hmm. it's really just using kind of the double buttons and stuff. But mm-hmm. I do, in fact, you can probably see which ones I'm using by checking. Hopefully, I, I would have done this almost certainly, kind of unticked everything that I wasn't using. Yes. Well, there's a real advantage with um, the Ultimate Add-ons for Beaver Builder because they are truly modulized, aren't they? So if they're unticked, they're not going to use up any resources. That's right. And so it is really worthwhile unticking anything that you're not using. Uh, As you can see, I'm using dual button. I'm not really sure if I was using that or not. Uh, I'm definitely using info boxes for those big orange blocks on the Mm -hmm. homepage. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I'm using the the price box. The photo module is much better. Um, I'm... uh, testimonials and team if Simon watches this and I haven't yet done his testimonials I apologize because <laughs> uh, he's got some great testimonials and I haven't put them on yet okay. um, hotspot I'm not sure why that one's active I think it must be new 
Uh, it's a new module, so yes. it's appeared, and then I haven't unticked it, so I'll do that. Um, so, yeah. Mm, social share, you've got that on. Are you using that? No, social, no. Uh, I think I think that might be a new one as well. So Yes, it is a new one. That's, yeah. But we, might, we may well use that with the, uh, the course landing page, so I'll, I'll leave that on for now. Hmm. But, um, yeah, so untick any of the modules you're not using, and it will help with your website performance for sure. Um, yeah, the other one's really worth mentioning. There's the WP Smush Pro, which is a image minifier, uh -huh. if that's the right word. And WP Rocket is a fantastic caching plugin. You have to pay for it, but it really is worth it. Um, and I'm using WordFence on this site. Yes. I think I think you use WordPress, uh, Word WordFence. Um, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of WordFence. Um, I don't. I find it complicated, the settings. Mm -hmm. And I have had a few sites hacked with WordFence, but I think that was going back a few years. And to be honest, it probably wasn't WordFence's fault. It was probably a fault of client, you know, from an agency project, oh. um, you know, that outsourced it to me, kind of not updating plugins. So yes. it's probably not WordFence's fault. But my, my choice is Securi uh, Cloud Proxy. Okay. Um, which again is premium to say the least. Um, you know, it's minimum one hundred ninety nine dollars per site, uh -huh. which is not not within everyone's budget. But you know, if anyone's watching the news from the UK recently and and dropping out of the Facebook group for a few minutes, then they might notice that the NHS has been hacked. So uh -huh. you know, convincing clients. <laughs> yeah. Did you know about that, David? No, I didn't. No, the NHS is yeah. Check the news later. It's massive. It's really uh -huh. bad. Um, certainly so ransomware. But so you know, every time something like that happens, it does help to convince clients to spend more on their security than on their hosting, which is a big. Yeah. I think they find it difficult to get the head around that because they kind of bundle it into the same thing. But yeah, mm. Word uh, WordFence versus Security. I much prefer Security. Um, I, I've had no hacks since I've been on Security. And um, and also WP Engine, I've just recently moved to them, and not everybody knows that Security is Security Cloud Proxy is part of their system uh, uh, integrated, so that's a really good value. Um, you know, if you've got ten ten sites for ten dollars a site, you're getting Security plus the hosting plus a CDN for ten dollars a site per mm. per month. It's amazing. Mm. Is it also owned by GoDaddy now? Um, Securi are owned by GoDaddy, yeah. So, yeah, so the plugin is, yeah, ah. yeah. And honestly, I, I felt really strange when I read that news because I'd just been talking, just like I had to you earlier, about managed WP. They've been bought by GoDaddy. It's all fine. They're good people. And then Securi were bought, bought by GoDaddy, <laughs> and I was wasn't sure how I felt about that. And suddenly, that you know. I was realized I was being quite hypocritical about my uh, <laughs> my attitudes to GoDaddy. I realized I hadn't really fully got over them yet. But I think it, I think it's a good thing in the long run. You know, um, GoDaddy they're taking over these these smaller companies and they they are letting them do their thing so far. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and obviously they're associated with Beaver Builder a bit now, aren't they? In some some ways. Yes. Yes. So well, you know. Yeah, I'm positive. Of, well, I have to be positive. They're buying everything. <laughs> they are buying everything. They're buying stuff that people don't know. You know, they're buying and stuff, and you know, it's it's uh, scary. Yeah. So well, yeah, they they can they can buy uh, WP Blueprint Design if they like. They can buy that million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, you've been, well, we've been going on for quite some time now. Let me just check the questions that I want to ask you because we've gone through I think the basics is there any things you want to cover just on the the design on yeah, the, think on yeah. The pages? Uh, not so much the design uh, you can kind of see go through and people are free to ask any questions at any time about this I, I honestly I admit I got kind of lucky with the design on this it all came together the content the process I didn't get paid obviously what it's worth or anything mm. but it was just it proved and Chantel I don't know how to pronounce the rest of can you do the do the yeah, honors with that I think it's Chantel Edward Betsy 
Yeah, she's got her one day webs business, which is just inspiring, you know, to sort of process wise. And she gets all the content up front. Yes. And it, this site for me just proved the value of doing that. There was no lorem ipsum. We chose imagery and spacing and typography all worked around the content. And we really did go to town on the typography on this. We really did try to make it all work and balance. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, well, well done to, you know, Chantel for, for that. You know, it's, yeah. It proves that get your content first if you can. You're going to yeah. save yourself a whole bunch of time. Your, your client will get a better product at the end of it. So, yeah, do mm. that first. Would you say that's the thing that you learned most from this project? Uh, there was that. And uh, the, the, three, the three things that I took from this mostly were um, mm -hmm. the, the benefit of doing that from the design, uh, the benefit of really taking care of, um, of every little aspect. I think Beaver Builder's uh, advanced mobile padding tools came mm -hmm. out around the time of this site as well. Um, so there's, yeah, the, the, the design stuff, the, and then the other one was performance, uh, getting certain things right for the performance of your site. And then the third one was um, sharing stuff with the community, you know, because this was the first one I kind of properly shared with the community. And, you know, that, that was a game changer for me just doing that, the, the positive experience that that was. And also what I learned from critical feedback and we tweaked, you know, uh, so that's a really good thing to do. But the performance is the last thing I would really, really want to highlight on this particular site. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, we, we did... I learned a lot about combining a certain bunch of technologies and processes and, and techniques that do result in a very quick loading website. Um, and I, I would, I would really, you know, want to share that because I've, I've took that to every project that I've done since, and they're all performing extremely well in that, in that sense. And um, I've got the speed test up here, which I did just earlier. And and I know this is Pingdom, so it gives you the best. Gives you the best, uh, the best it? score usually. Yeah. So, uh, so let's go with Pingdom. But anyway, regardless, regardless, you know, Pingdom has given me a almost just over half a second loading time for the homepage, mm. which is on a host that this this is a SiteGround host. This is their. This isn't even their Go Geek package. This is their Grow Big package. Yes. Which is the mid-range a mid-range shared hosting package, mm -hmm. producing a website loading at half a second is mm. kind of unbelievable you know so but that is combining a bunch of things that SiteGround and other hosts will allow you to do which is use php 7 it's like upgrading from windows xp to windows 10 in terms of performance mm. um use ssl you'll get as long as your host supports it http2 which mm. what that does for anyone who doesn't know you can't really see it on there, but what it does is every asset that comes from this domain, uh, genuineconfidence.com, loads at the same time rather than, so if there's 30 images on a page, it loads them all at the same time rather than saying, get this image, get this image, get this image, get this image. Yeah. I know it does that get this image very, very fast, but not fast enough you know the, the when http was invented it wasn't it never knew that we were going to have websites like this with huge banners and mm -hmm. so http2 is the answer to that it's the modern way of loading assets into the browser sorry if i got that wrong anyone but that's how i <laughs> understand http2 um using wp rocket and minification and using the site ground uh, caching system mm -hmm. again just shaved so much time off the loading page and for what i understand this is good for google and good for the users so mm -hmm. and um and it, it caused quite a lot of discussion in the, the 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 facebook group and you know i was really pleased to kind of be able to feedback on on that particular aspect because that was i really felt that that was helping people mm -hmm. uh, because they got slow sites and and you could you know they, they were looking at what was done here which i'd explained in the post and you know, smushing images and all these kind of things, and they were then hopefully going applying those to some of their slow sites, and and suddenly getting fast sites, or mm. faster. Sites. So yeah, the performance was a big one on this one. I was kind of quite proud about that. Yeah, well, something I did notice actually while I was loading some of your pages is that the images were um, progressive, and I don't know if that was taken care of by 
smush or whether that's something that you do anyway when you're optimizing your images to upload them to your site. Yeah, so I can't take credit for that. I don't know who's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe it's WP Smush, yeah. uh, but it might equally be the um, SiteGround CDN. Uh, it might be their kind of caching system doing that. Um, so I'd, I'd love to know who's doing that. That'd yeah. be great. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a perception thing, isn't it? It doesn't actually speed up the mm. load, but but the fact that when you've got those uh, progressive JPEGs, um, you see some of the image before it's fully loaded. So the perception is yeah. that the, the site's loaded quickly. So it's a great thing. Yeah, it is. But, uh, yeah, mm. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure who's doing that. Yeah. But, um, cool. Uh, uh, one other thing I'd advise to anybody as well. Just one last thing is uh, we've got some icons here. Um, for the uh, using font awesome mm -hmm. um, a little technique I've kind of learned recently is if you add these little icons into your nav bars uh, you paste the code from font awesome which looks like this i class fa twitter and you link it up and stuff mm -hmm. and both google and accessibility readers uh, mm -hmm. don't know what that is uh, they just see it as a an empty i yeah. tag there um, so you can put inside that i tag this little span class screen reader text, and then put inside there what the text is, and it helps. You know, this is another thing. I'm no massive expert on accessibility, but I've been to a couple of talks recently, and it's always been something that's on my mind. And these tools, you know, generate press, and yeah. it's another thing I'd advise anyone to kind of level up on. If you can level up on your CSS. And if you get the opportunity to do something that just improves the accessibility of a website, do that as well. And you will, again, you just, <laughs> you'll just feel like you're kind of doing something for karma as well, if, <laughs> if, if for no one else. <laughs> but, um, you know, it just, it's one of those lifelong learning things. You kind of feel like, okay, I've learned how to make font awesome icons um, accessible. Yes. And you kind of go home feeling better about yourself. So, um so yeah, can, little things like that, really useful. I can do a plug for myself because I did a little video on that actually, how to add social icons the right way. Excellent. Uh, is that? I mean, have I got it right? Have I done that? Yeah, I, I think that. so. I, I wasn't yeah. looking at the code, but yeah, exactly that. Yeah. yeah, if you just leave it up like that, screen readers are just going to read the blank and you need to put something in there. So yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, um, glad, to, glad to be of help. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, Do you know what yep. I wanted to ask you a little bit? Do you know with the WP Rocket, you were talking about speed there. Do, mm. What do you kind of tick on in that plugin? Do you put the whole mm. images in the JavaScript caching or do it minifying, rather? Well, you can see on this side I have. Yeah. And I did that. Uh, I'm going to untick them for now yeah. and tell you these the sayings that I actually use from now on because I've I haven't gone in there and changed those, so okay. I'm changing them to what I'm using now. Um, another site I put out on the, the Facebook group uh, a while back was a website called Data Graphic. And again, I kind of posted that out, and some people came back to me straight away. And um, Davinda, who's super helpful on the group, said, um, you know, I, I think this isn't working on Mac Safari. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Davinda, but he definitely got involved in the conversation, and there was a couple of people involved in that. So I trotted over to my friend's Mac, who sits opposite me, and had a look. And yep, there was yeah. some things weren't looking very good at all, stacking-wise and stuff. I found out the if I unticked these two particular boxes, these mm -hmm. I don't know what the word how to say it. The con concatenate concatenate yes. the CSS and J JavaScript files seem to break some of the layouts within Beaver Builder. Mm -hmm. on a Mac Safari. On no other browser there was a problem. Nothing else was a problem. So to be honest, these don't really make a big difference to the speed. They do give you a better score. Yes. But you know, in terms of the speed, it's not a major, major saver. The other settings I'd really recommend, I'd probably say don't bother with those with Beaver Builder. Yeah. Unless if you're using any kind of fades and stuff already, those will just kind of fight it from what I've gathered. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an advanced option here. This tick box is new for WP Rocket. Yes. And again, ticking it just gives you a few more percent on the score. Mm -hmm. 
But what it does do with Beaver Builder is it stops some of the options working on the mobile padding views. I don't know why it does, but it interferes with Beaver Builder in quite a oh. an irritating way. And um, yeah, so you do that, and you can't you can't access the um, the mobile padding and the tablet padding screens. It's it's very strange. Um, so just untick it, lose a few percent. If your client's moaning about it, tick it, let them check the score again. They're happy, yeah. then go and untick it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, the database options, it's probably worth ticking all those. I haven't done that yet, but uh, tick all those and have those uh, optimizing weekly, maybe. Yeah. And then I'd recommend to not tick the manual and the automatic um, preloading of the caches. I've seen a lot of sites break that I've done when mm -hmm. those are ticked. It does give you a big performance boost, but equally you get emails from the client saying, we've just checked it and it's broke and mm -hmm. none of the style sheets are loading. So just just don't bother, in my opinion, um, ticking those. And I think those are ticked by default, so it's worth checking in and, and unticking those. So yeah, I tend to tick those three there and none of those, yep. all of those, mm -hmm. and none of those. And um, you'll, I seem to get the best results by doing that. Um, since I've moved to WP Engine on some sites, you don't need WP Rocket for anything. You, you don't need security okay. plugins. You don't need caching plugins. It's all taken care of. And so that's kind of nice to know. Ooh, it is good to know. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was really interesting. That was just for my curiosity because I'm a big fan of WP Rocket and, and actually my set mm -hmm. is very similar, but I, I do generally stick the CSS on, um, but not the JS because I notice that break things on mobile devices, uh, mm -hmm. menus particularly. Yeah. Yep. I think if you're not using Beaver Builder and you're, you know, you're using a, a, just using the theme as it is and using, you know, more traditional way of building website, for instance, with WordPress, you can probably tick these. If you if you're very light on plugins, you can probably tick these with no problems. But the more the more kind of front end plugin wizardry that's going on, the more you probably want to avoid some of these tick boxes here. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think on the the caching things. Is there anything else? I think that's the majority of the highlights, really, isn't it? Yes. Paul, I just led yeah. you off in the wrong direction. We were closing up nicely about what was learned from this project, <laughs> and it took you back yeah. over to plugins again. Back to I... WP Rocket, yeah. It's yeah. a great plugin. I totally agree. It's fantastic. It works brilliantly with SiteGround because the two companies have worked together to to make so that there's no overlap with their various caching systems, um, which yeah. you don't get with uh, with other caching plugins. That's, that's why kind of SiteGround... And another free caching plugin can cause people problems. Um, there's ways around it, but you know, I've I've done this stuff for a long time, and I I still don't get the options panels for a lot of plugins. They're too complicated. Mm. WP Rocket is very very simple. Yes. Yeah. Um, great. Well, I think we've probably covered everything. Is there anything else that you'd like to just cover before we go? I think I'd probably go on way too long, David. So uh, <laughs> I think we, you know, we probably have covered the majority of the different, um, the, the important aspects on there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if these go down quite well, you know, it'd be lovely to have you back again because I know you've got a lot of stuff you could share with us, particularly, you know, some other sites where there's more functionality and we could talk for hours, couldn't we? That's right. Yep. Yeah, the Armonico site I briefly showed earlier. There's some there's some nice cool stuff going on in the back of that because it's a much it's not just a brochure site that one. Um, so this, but that one's not live yet. And yeah. um, but this, this is this is kind of a good site for a, a design perspective, I think. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so we're coming to the end. I don't know how to get out of this uh, second episode, but I, I guess it's just a case of me thanking you for sparing all of this time. And I hope this is going to record well. So I'm going to say goodbye for me, David Wormsley, and I'll let you say goodbye. Yeah, thank you very much uh, from Paul Lacey. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>